Consequently, they will believe in the Buddha drama. After they study the Buddha drama, they will become more and more courageous day by day. For example, I had a disciple who took refuge with me in Hong Kong. Before he took refuge, he was afraid of ghosts and dark nights. He was so frightened that he did not dare to step out the door when the night fell. Even though there were other people in the house with him, he was still afraid. He felt as if he was surrounded by ghosts, even though he does not see any. When he took refuge, I did not give him any mantra or drama. But after he took refuge, he was not afraid of being alone, not afraid of ghosts or the dark. He was not afraid to be home alone at night. He was not afraid to go outside. This is how you help fearful beings. Tell living beings who like to cry to stop and be joyful instead. In short, living beings who are extreme we must reach the middle way. This is the principle behind regulating others. Regulating obstinate beings so that they can learn what causes suffering and what brings bliss. Obstinate beings do not care whether there is suffering or joy. What is suffering? What is joy? He does not care. Since he is obstinate, he is not afraid of suffering or happiness. Shakyamuni Buddha make obstinate beings know what is true suffering and what is true happiness. Exactly what is the true suffering? Falling into the lower realms is true suffering. For example, it is true suffering to fall into the realm of the house hungry ghosts or animals. What is true happiness? Becoming enlightened, certifying to the fruition of Ahatshri and practicing the Bodhisattva path is true happiness. Actually, there are so many kinds of suffering and happiness, but it is fine just for us to have a general idea. Each one sent his attendant. All the great bodhisattvas, masatvas throughout the lands of the ten directions did not come alone. Each bodhisattva brought many attendants, perhaps one, two, three, or four. Some preferred as many as several hundred, seven, several thousand, or several tens of thousands of attendants. Each person sent the attendants with him to pay their respects to the world honored one. They went up to the Buddha and greeted him. What are their greetings like? They say, Is the world honored one healthy, at ease, and happy? Are living beings easy to save? World honored one, are you free of any sickness? Are you free of any afflictions? Are you very happy? Are living beings easy? Are living beings easy to deliver to the shore of perfection? This is how they greet the world honored one. At that time, the first common Shakyamuni's mind a slight smile, not a boisterous laugh, and emitted billions of varieties of great, the largest light clouds and colorful clouds. Sutra, there was a light cloud of great fulfillment, the light cloud of great compassion, the light cloud of great wisdom. The light cloud of great Rana, the light cloud of great Samadhi, the light cloud of great auspiciousness, the light cloud of great blessings, the light cloud of great merit, the light cloud of great refuge, and the light cloud of great praise. After emitting in this clear, bubbly, bubbly, many light clouds. Commentary as said, there was the billions and billions of clouds of great light. Since billions and billions are numerous, they, he will only name ten. These ten represent the contemplation of the ten vehicles and the ten drama realms. As said, the light cloud of great fulfillment. Shakyamuni Buddha released lead clouds of great perfection, which are symbolic of how the realm of Buddhas that pervades the, the entire Dharma realm. Perfection means that something is non-existent yet omnipresent 
shining on all places without an exception of the smoke. All of space, all of space, and the drama realm are covered by these great clouds of light. This is the realm of Buddhas, which is perfect. The light clouds of great compassion, kindness can bestow happiness, while compassion can uproot suffering. This is the Bodhisattva path. Bodhisattvas conduct themselves to bring living beings every happiness and uproot living beings every suffering. Whatever living beings enjoy, give that to them. They like sweets, give them sweets. They like sour things, give them sour things. When Universal Worthy Bodhisattva was the temple's dining hall attendant, someone who stands by the table serving and refilling food for monastics, he had all the seasonings with him, one bottle after another. You enjoy something sweet, and he will add some sugar. You enjoy something sour, and he will add some vinegar. You enjoy something spicy, and he will give you some hot pepper. He had bottles all over his body. He carried all these seasonings with him because if someone wants something sour, he will pour something sour for him. But the person will complain, "Hey, I do not want that much. How come you gave me so much?" Someone says he wants something spicy, but the bodhisattva is afraid of. Afraid to pour too much to the person, we not want it. It was very little, and the other person yells, "Hey, some more! So little!" Universal worthy Bodhisattva has a hard time satisfying living beings. He gives a lot, and they complain that it is too much. He gives a little, and they complain that it is too little. See, it's not very easy to be a Bodhisattva. Confucius of China had this to say: Only women and petty individuals are most difficult to live with. Women and petty individuals are difficult to handle. How come? Too close, and they condescend. Get too close to them, and they become unreasonable and do not observe the rules. Too far, and they resent. Stay. A distance from them, and they resent you. They are difficult to interact with. Confucius probably suffered in this way. So, as an experienced expert, his words fit people's understanding. Bodhisattvas are this way too, too good to people, and it does not accord with the middle way. Too mean to people, and that does not accord with the middle way either. So, universal worthy Bodhisattva has a hard time satisfying living beings. The Bodhisattva path is difficult to walk. I am so considerate of you, and you are so dissatisfied. This light cloud of compassion represents the Bodhisattva path. The light cloud of great wisdom. This wisdom represents the realm of those who enlighten to conditions. Those who cultivated the twelve causal wings and became enlightened. He needs great wisdom. What is great wisdom? He contemplates the twelve causal wings and knows that all things come into being and cease. Through this principle, he develops true wisdom from the Buddha nature. So the light cloud of great wisdom represents the realm of those who enlightened to conditions. The twelve causal links are ignorance, cognition, cognitions, activity, activity, cognitions, consciousness, consciousness, cognitions, form, form, cognitions. The six entrances, the six entrances, cognitions, contact, contact, cognitions, feelings, feelings, cognition, love, love, cognitions, craving, craving, cognitions, existence, existence, cognitions, birth, birth, cognitions, old age. And death. This series involves birth, migration. There is also a series that involves seizing. Ignorance ceases, then activity ceases. Activity ceases, then consciousness ceases. Consciousness ceases, then name and form ceases. 
Neumann form says then the six entrances says the six entrances says then contact says contact says then feeling says feeling says then love says love says then craving says craving says then existence says existence says then birth says birth says then old age and death says shut ignorance and everything disappears so those who enlighten to conditions contemplate and shatter ignorance first everything comes from ignorance he shatters ignorance and real wisdom is born the light cloud a great prana prana is wisdom which includes literary prana real mark prana contemplative prana Saturnus develop contemplative prana from literary prana. They reach real mark prana through contemplative prana. Since they reached real mark prana, they certify to ahatship. These are the Saturnus vehicle. The light cloud of great samadhi. Samadhi is Sanskrit that means concentration. Heavenly beings cultivated ten good deeds at the highest level and reach the four dhyanas and the eight samadhis through this power of concentration. The four dhyanas are the fourth dhyana heaven, third dhyana heaven, second dhyana heaven, and first dhyana heaven. The first dhyana is called the ground of living, the production of bliss. The second dhyana is called the ground of bliss from samadhi. The third dhyana is called the ground of living bliss. The fourth dhyana is called the ground of purity from letting go thoughts. There are also the four stations of emptiness. The Bali's emptiness heaven, the Bali's consciousness heaven, the heaven of no particular place and the heaven of thought, non non thought. Together these are the four dhyanas and the eight samadhis. These types of individuals have samadhi and cultivate the highest among the ten goodnesses, which include the superior grade, the average grade, and the below average grade. These people will become reborn in the heavens if they take the three refuges and receive the five precepts.